In this video, I'm going to talk about the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. I actually just have the box right here on, on the table. The actual product is behind my rack gear. You're not going to be able to see it. I need it plugged in for the purpose of this video. Some people might wonder why I'd pay $200 for the Intensity Shuttle when Premiere Pro, Final Cut, Edius, Sony Vegas, just about all the software titles out there can actually use your second computer screen, kind of as a client monitor. Some people wonder, you know, why buy broadcast equipment like the Intensity Shuttle and buy, you know, broadcast quality monitor. Well, when you're playing interlaced footage, which this is actually interlaced footage from a client, and it's going to look so much better on true broadcast equipment than it's going to look on your computer monitor. Whether you're using Avid or Edius or Final Cut Pro 10, I know people are going to say, oh, on Final Cut Pro 10, it just looks fantastic. There's no need to have third-party hardware. For Final Cut Pro 10 and Avid editors that actually do have third-party hardware from Blackmagic Design, AJA, or any of the other companies out there, they're going to say that, yeah, it does look much better. Your computer monitor is almost going to look like it's playing 15 frames per second when you got an interlaced timeline. It just never really looks that good. Even if you have 30 frames per second progressive, it just never really looks that good. It looks kind of choppy if you have motion paths on it. You can take a 30 frame per second timeline and, and put motion paths on it, like the, the graphics that you see right here, and it's just going to kind of look a little bit jerky as opposed to if you've seen it on an interlaced timeline going to broadcast equipment. Now, if your timeline is 60 frames per second, that can actually look smooth just on a regular computer screen, whether you use an Avid Final Cut Pro or, or Premiere, but it's actually taking more out of your CPU and actually using your GPU a lot more. So that's why I like having the broadcast equipment. As you can see, I can get several layers with effects and stuff like that playing in real time using this intensity shuttle on an interlaced timeline. The HDV clips are interlaced, but the video clips of me are actually shot at 60 frames per second. And when I drop it on an interlaced timeline, Premiere Pro handles it really well. I'm not losing any of my re real-time capabilities by using this Intensity Shuttle Pro. And that's the main reason why I have the Intensity Shuttle Pro, so I can get really smooth motion graphics and I don't have to work my CPU or GPU super hard. It is true, I could use a 60 frame per second timeline. The motion graphics would look smooth. I just wouldn't get as many layers uh, of video and, you know, special effects applied to it and as many uh, title layers if I actually was doing it at 60 frames per second. If you have Avid Final Cut Pro, you know, any of the other software programs, Edius, I don't doubt that when you're in a 60 uh, frame per second timeline that you're not going to get the same amount of special effects that you would have if you were in the 30 frame per second timeline, progressive timeline. And that's why having the interlaced timeline allows me to have a lot more special effects than I ever could if I was at 60 frames per second. So for the $200, it's well worth it. I get really smooth motion graphics, as I stated. Also, I'm not using my CPU and GPU all that much, like as if I had a 60 frame per second timeline. Plus, the composite looks better. You get better accurate color correction if you are doing stuff for broadcast. You're going to notice a slight color shift from your computer screen monitor to the actual NTSC broadcast monitor. There's also a few other things. If you actually look at the way this is laid out, how the Adobe goes across there, I want to let people know that with most TVs, you can actually go into the menu, and that's what we're going to do right now. And if I actually scroll down to the advanced video, and if I actually go into overscan, and, and I'm going to actually hit off on here, you should actually notice that the actual composition is different. See how you can probably hear what I can do here. You're going to see that you can see that little piece of green leaf there. And you can actually see that little piece of green leaf there. Because right now, it's not letting any of the actual video go beyond where the bezel is. So none of it's going to be hidden by the bezel on, on both these. But most people are actually going to not have the overscan off. Most of you are going to have the overscan on. Let me just go in here. Oh, let me go back into menu. It didn't work. Go back into menu real quick. Got to go into advanced video. And now the overscan. I got it back on. I'm going to hit exit. 
E, and there's my exit. Um, you can actually see that the little tiny piece of grass actually is now getting clipped. Whereas before, both of them had the same exact composition. I don't know if you can kind of tell here, there's, there's more of this right here on this particular screen because the computer monitor is not using pixels hidden by the bezel. Um, I could actually probably, let me, could I slide it to something that might show it a little bit better? I might be able to. This, this right here might show it a little bit better. On here, there's much more area. You see a little bit of this, like, little tree or whatever in the background. Where in there you don't see it. It's closer to getting clipped. We see, like, there's a person here. They're getting more clipped in that, like I said, because the pixels hidden by the bezel are being used. We see this little thing uh, hanging down right here. I don't know if it's, a, well, if it's a plant or whatever, a plant pot or whatever. But you don't actually even see it on there. There's a lot of space between the picture and picture and the bottom where on that, it, it, there's very little space. So that's when they say the composition, you'll have the choice, you know, when you're going to broadcast equipment, whether you want the overscan or underscan off. So I hope that kind of helped people realize why you might want this, you know, broadcast equipment. Because when you're doing titles, I could put the title safe area up on Premiere Pro. You can do it with Final Cut Pro 10 and Avid. But it's not the same thing as actually seeing it on broadcast equipment. So I'd rather actually see what the composite actually looks like rather than seeing the title safe area. So you get better color correction. You also get more accurate composition. You're also going to get like smoother motion graphics, as I stated. So there's reasons why for 200 bucks this is a pretty good deal. Especially if you're doing you know, work for clients where it's going to be actually broadcast. Even though you shot at 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, most broadcasting is done with an interlaced timeline, or actually broadcast in interlaced, like 1080i as opposed to like 1080p. So even though you might have done work for the client at 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second, you can still actually put it on an interlaced timeline, it'll actually play really smooth. So there's reasons to have the equipment I got. I, I like using it. But it's actually not for everybody. You don't actually have to have this type of equipment. I thought it would be a good idea to show the actual intensity shuttle unit itself. I'm not sure if this is the input side or the output side. They look identical. As you can see, you have HDMI, component, S-video, and composite. The HDMI port can actually record video for most DSLR cameras, or you could use it for live streaming. You can also use it for game capture. It wouldn't probably be the best device for game capture. The S-Video and Composite ports can be used to capture Super VHS, Hi8, regular VHS, basically any type of analog tape that was standard definition, those ports will work great for. For outputting, it's up to you. Do you want to use the S-Video to go to an old CRT style monitor? Do you want to use the HDMI to go to an HD monitor? It's a pretty useful device to have. And for 180 bucks, I wouldn't want to be without it. It does come with a USB 3.0 cable, and it does get its power from that cable, which is nice. You don't have to worry about an AC adapter that your dog or cat might eat up. Another thing I like about the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle is that it will let me output to the older broadcast-style monitors, the old CRT monitors. A lot of the products from Blackmagic Design can do it as well as a lot of the products by Matrox and even AJA, a lot of their products can actually do it as well. With the Blackmagic Design product, at least the Intensity Shuttle, you just have to actually go into the control panel and where conversion is, you have to actually do HD to SD and it'll allow you the option to letterbox it if you want and that's what I use. So now this particular HD timeline will actually output to this monitor as well. And the motion graphics on CRT monitors are actually going to be probably a little bit better than what you'd see on, a, on one of the LCD uh, broadcast monitors. The CRT monitors, they don't really have any of that, what you, you, you would call response time, like 6 milliseconds or 30 milliseconds. It's just, it's, it's dead on. There is, there is no, like, lag. So motion graphics can actually look a little bit better on, on the older CRT monitors. They still have their advantages, too, in, in other ways. So... I do like it for reference purposes, you know, to look at it on the CRT as well as the standard definition monitor. 
Now, you're probably going to notice that that doesn't look quite right. And the reason being is when you actually down convert high definition with the intensity shuttle to standard definition, the HDMI output port as well as like the component, all of those will actually be put be outputting at standard definition. You can't have the HDMI port at high definition and the S-Video, which is plugged into this monitor, you know, at standard definition. It has to rasterize down every output port to standard definition. So we can kind of fix this by actually going into the zoom and we can actually put it at normal and that's actually going to be a little bit cleaner image. As you can see, I can still get a lot of real-time special effects by having it, you know, output to this older CRT monitor, and that's because the Intensity Shuttle, it's using its hardware to actually rasterize the image. I should clarify that there is hardware in the Intensity Shuttle to rasterize HD timelines down so they can be seen on a standard definition monitor. Premiere Pro does not take a hit in real-time performance but I don't know if other software programs would take a hit in real-time performance by simply having the intensity shuttle hooked up. This is probably the better way to look at it. The image is going to look a, a little bit more crisp and clean. What you can do for clients if they do want to see what it, like if you were editing a standard definition timeline and the client wanted to see what it would look like full screen, you can zoom out. Like if you were editing, for example, um, mini DV tapes you'd actually be able to give them a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like on an HD monitor, as well as what it would look like on a CRT monitor. And standard definition monitors are, are great for viewing like mini DV tapes. It's great for viewing DVD. Anything that's standard definition will look better on a standard definition monitor. And that's why I think anybody that does video production for a living should have an old CRT monitor. If you've got an older, you know, if you've got older videotapes, whether they're VHS, Hi8, or even Mini DV that you're editing for a client, it's just so much better to watch it uh, on the older CRT monitor than on your computer monitor, or even outputting it to a HDTV. It, it's well worth the, the price of investment to actually go and, and look on Craigslist and find an old CRT monitor. I, I'm glad I have mine. I actually had to do a, a lot of editing of VHS and Hi8 tapes about a month ago. And it was just painful to, to look at it on a, on a high definition TV. It just looked, VHS is just going to be super horrible. Mini DV, it, it can kind of look decent on an HD monitor, I'll admit that. But anything like the older analog high tapes or VHS, it'll look fantastic on here. It'll look really crisp and clean. But when you actually put it on an HD monitor, it just looks horrible. Even if I was to zoom in, even if I was to take and set it like this where we're actually shrinking the image down a little bit, it's just never going to look really super good, you know, VHS on an HD monitor. There's, there's nothing you can really do about it or any of the analog, you know, videotapes. So that's why I have this equipment. I, I like being able to use the CRT monitor as a reference, like I said. Plus, if I actually have clients that are giving me interlaced video clips, it's just so much better to see interlaced video on actual broadcast equipment than watching it on your computer monitor. So I hope this kind of explains to some people why I do have this Intensity Shuttle. I mean, I wish I would have bought one. I ended up buying this in 2014. I wish I would have bought it in like 2010, 2011 when they first hit the market. It, it, it is a lot better than using your computer screen, your second computer screen, as a, uh, as a client monitor or as a broadcast out monitor. The majority of you watching this video probably will not need this piece of equipment. After watching this video, I hope you can understand why I do need it.